um, transforming our city or our space right now at New Haven. All right, and tonight promises to be another interesting night as we look into facing hopelessness in our city. Now, as we start, I'll invite um, our I'll invite Daniel and company to lead us in song service and the theme song. Okay, good night, everyone. Before we begin our song service, we will say a word of prayer. Let us pray. O most righteous and heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for another night in this week of prayer. We pray and ask God that tonight will be a night with a difference, that you will open our hearts to receive the word that you have for us, be with those who are on their way to joining, Lord, and we pray that we will have a good turnout. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our first song, our first hymn is hymn number 516, All the Way. All the way. My Savior, leave me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know what there be for Jesus to let all things well. For I know. Amen. Hymn number 523. My faith has found a resting place. Hymn number 523. <clears throat> My faith has found a resting place, not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Enough for me that Jesus says this and my fear and doubt. And sinful soul, I come to him. He will not cast me out. I need no other I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. My soul is resting on the way, the living word of God. Salvation in my Savior's name, salvation through his blood. I need no other. I need no other. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. My great physician kills the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life he gave. I need no other reason, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Amen. 
And our last hymn will be hymn number 195, Showers of Blessing. Hymn number 195. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy just run us our fall. But for the showers we need. There shall be showers of blessing. Fresh us reviving again over the hills and the valleys. Sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and honor the word. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are falling. But for the showers we see. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy just round us are for, but for the showers we plead. Amen. And now we will sing our theme song, The Power of Your Love. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed. Bring you flowing from the grave that I found in you. Lord, I come to you. The weaknesses I see in me will be straight away by the power of your love. Oh, because let the love surround me. Lord, unveil my love. Let me see you face to face. The knowledge of my love as you live in me. Lord, renew my life as your will unfolds. In my love, in living every day, by the power of your love, oh, people, let your love surround me, bring me in. Draw me to your side. Oh, oh. And now, silence, 
Amen. I now ask that everyone gets into the attitude of prayer as I pray. Let us pray. O most righteous and heavenly Father, we thank you for this another youth week of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the week thus far and how you have carried us through it. Lord, we come to you now putting before you your people. Lord, you see and you know each and every one. You know every <clears throat> hair upon their head, dear Father. And you see all the hopelessness in our cities. You see all the persons who are discouraged, the persons who are depressed as they go through their tests and their trials. I ask, Lord, that you send your holy angels. I ask that you send the comforter to them now, dear Father. May they feel their loving embrace. Lord, I ask that you will strengthen them at this time. Give them the faith, give them the courage, the strength to move forward, dear Father. Help them to remember that whatever circumstance they're in right now, it is just temporary. It will not last forever because you are coming again. And when you come again, all the pain and the sorrow that we face will be over. We put before you tonight, speak of your father. Lord, you see her, Lord, and you know her. We ask that you would hide her behind your cross so that the words that she speaks, Lord, we will not see her, but we will hear directly from your throne room. Lord, we present all the youth of this church to you, dear Father. You see all the tests, all the trials, all the circumstances that we face daily, dear Father. And I just ask that you continue to strengthen us. May we keep you closer than our brother. May we turn to you first and foremost, dear Father. Forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. Hear and answer us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Armonia, Daniel, and Nadiv. And for those who are just joining us, we're looking at tonight facing hopelessness in your city. Right? Um, hopelessness itself is 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 the lack of hope. Hope is that expectation, that longing for something. Right. Um, and for many of us, we do have expectations and we do long for certain things to happen, whether it is within our immediate city that is where we live, or within our church community, right? And for that child of God who is expecting different things, we could expect God to come very soon. We could expect good things to happen for us. And the the moment we don't see things happening immediately, or we still don't see things happening after weeks or months, even years, right? We fall into that area of hopelessness, right? Um, but tonight we're looking to how we can dig our foundations or make our foundations strong in God, in Jesus, right? Unwavering, where we can still cling to him and still be hopeful and still trust in his word that whatever he promises will come through, right? And with that, we're going to go into our opening song. So I'll invite Armonia again. Um, we'll be singing, We Have This Hope. All right, and following our opening song, we'll have Jay Letford with our scripture reading. Okay, our opening song. We have this hope. Okay. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope is a calling. Of the Lord. 
We have this faith that Christ alone in part. We believe the time is here when the nations far and near shall wake and shout and sing. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope is the coming of the Lord. We are united in Jesus Christ our Lord. We are united in His love. Love for the wicked, evil as the world. Please hold me the Savior's love. Soon the heavens will open wide. Christ will come to claim his bride. All the universe will sing. Hallelujah, Christ is King. We have this hope, this faith, and God's great love. We have a youth and an eternity in Good evening, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we are. All right. So the scripture reading is taken from Romans 5, 1 through to 5. And it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of glory of the Lord. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character hope. No hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. Amen. All right, good night, everyone. Let us pray. Loving God and our King, our kind Father and our friend, the healer, our Savior, the great God of our universe, I want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather here tonight. I want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given us to come and to worship and to share together. But as I come even now before you, I place us before you in a very special way. Lord, you see that we are unworthy. We are undeserving of your love and your grace. And yet still, despite what we have done and despite who we are, you remain a good and a faithful God. So, Lord, I pray even now that you will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I pray even now that you will wash away and that you replace our stony hearts with a heart of flesh. I pray, Lord, that as I come for you, even now that you will touch each and every youth in a special way. Lord, you see 
where we are indeed struggling with hopelessness. But I pray for now that you will give us the strength and that you'll remind us that there's indeed nothing that comes to our path that has not passed through your hands. I pray, Lord, that you will give us a spirit of thankfulness. Help us, Lord, to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. That while we are going through our different seasons, that while we are facing the various challenges that we're facing, help us, Lord, to see the light. Help us, Lord, to see the good that has come out of each situation before. Because we know that you are able to work all things for our good. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your kindness, and I pray for now for the church as a whole. <laughs> Lord, you see that we all have our different challenges that we're facing, and I pray for now that you will spark within us a spirit of unity that will indeed come together and that will support each other. I pray, Lord, that you will lift us up and help us, Lord, to be the light, to be the encouragement to those around us. Help us, Lord, to be the reason where that people remember that you are indeed still a good God. Help us, dear Lord, to be good representatives of you. Help us, Lord, to not be Christians who are complaining and mumbling about our situation. But I pray, Lord, that in the midst of hopelessness, that we'll remember that you have been a good God, you will continue to be a good God, and you will indeed bless us and lift us up from the different circumstances of our face. So I pray even now that your Holy Spirit will touch us in a very special way, that you will unite us and that you will lift up our hearts and lift up our spirits even now. Help us to remember what you have done for us in the past and help us to remember that you are indeed mighty and that you have the power to save. You are able to break down every barrier, break down every challenge, break down everything that the devil has laid up to to, to to cause us harm and to cause us to stumble, you are indeed able to remove it. And so I pray even now that you will help us to call on you, to claim the promises that you have made, that you will never leave us or forsake us. To claim the promises that you have made, that the good work that you start within us, you will finish it. And I pray for now that you'll give us your peace, that you'll lift us up even now and give us a peace which passeth all understanding. Help us, Lord, that while the boat may be rocking, while the storm is raging, that our peace that we have in you will help us to remember that we can indeed depend on you and that you will indeed deliver us when the time is right. So I pray for now that you'll help us to be patient. That as we learn these lessons that come from the different challenges, that we'll patiently wait for you to deliver us. And that we'll indeed glory in carrying your cross as we navigate these situations. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. I pray that you'll continue to bless us, Lord, and watch over us. Thank you, Lord, for your comfort and your care. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. And I want to thank you, Lord, for your words of hope and the peace that you have left with us. Where she'll be with the rest of the program in a very special way. Help us, Lord, to leave here being transformed, being reminded that you are indeed a good God and that you are indeed a mighty God who's able to lift us up. So I pray for now that you'll empower us, that as we step into our community and that we step into the city and as we speak on you and for your behalf, that we will remember that you are indeed with us and that you will not forsake us. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. Continue to bless us, guide and direct us. Continue to provide for us and, and lead us even now. In your precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Do you know what time it is? It's time for time with Jesus. It's the way to begin the day. Time to hear what he has to say. Good evening, boys and girls. We continue with our week of prayer reading. The theme for tonight is praying like Jesus. So when you pray, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, we pray that your name will always be kept holy. We pray that your kingdom will come. We pray that 
what you want to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 9 to 10. Jesus was very happy when his disciples asked him how to pray. He was delighted that they wanted to talk to their father in heaven, just as he did. Jesus started his special prayer with our father. When we pray, we often put our hands together, but we can also give ourselves a big hug from God and imagine his delight whenever we take time to talk to him. He welcomes us with a big hug and then he sits us on his big lap, ready to listen to us, just like the most wonderful father on earth. Jesus praised God for being holy, perfect, wise, and loving. Jesus wanted God, God's wisdom, love, joy, peace, and grace to be experienced on earth, just oh, as God. it is in heaven, so that Everyone could see and feel how wonderful it is to live in God's forever kingdom. Jesus prayed for enough food for one day. He didn't give God a long list of wants. Then Jesus prayed that we would forgive other people just as God forgives us so that we can share his love with others. Finally, he asked God to help us make the, the good choices that lead us towards his wise, loving, and peaceful ways. His wise and, and to rescue us when we make bad choices. Our loving Father, God knows that we are human and we will make mistakes, but he will always be there to help us because he loves us. What a beautiful prayer. Whenever you pray, remember Jesus' pattern, pattern for talking to his father and speak simply and openly to him, remembering that he always loves you. Thank you very much. All right, at this time, we'll take a special from the Beckford sisters. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one, and yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. There's more and more that he is not near us. No, not one, no, not one. No night so dark, but his love can share us. No, not one, no, not one. Did ever say find this friend, forsake him? No, not one, no, not one. For sinner find that he would not take him. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows 
all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Thank you very much. Now, the speaker for us this evening is well no stranger to us she has contributed to our church and and our conference at large in different ways through gems through our virtual book club uh through ay and tonight is another means for her to allow god to utilize her all right she describes herself as a best a vessel to be filled by god so as she comes tonight i ask that you continue to pray for her as god uses her in a special way the speaker for us tonight is Sister Yannick Gordon. But before she comes, we'll have our song of meditation by the Beckfords. When peace is like a river, attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. My soul, it is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, my sin, no oh, the joy. Of this glorious thought, my sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I pay no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. And Lord, is the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well, my soul. 
Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. It is well with our soul. Isn't that beautiful that even in the midst of our bad times, we can say it is well with our souls? All right, so I'm going to be posting about five. I posted five texts in the chat. I'm going to ask persons to search for these texts. And when I ask for them, which is going to be a bit down in the sermon, I'm going to ask persons to just read those for me when I say them. All right, so I just want to thank Michael for his words of introduction. I was a bit worried because when Michael called me, I told him to surprise me. But I can rest assured that Michael allowed God to use him in his introduction. All right, so I, I want to thank the youth ministry's leadership as well as the board for allowing me to stand in the gap. All right, I want to thank my family for their support. And I finally, but most importantly, I thank God for continually using me in my unworthy state. Now this week, in fact, the month of March into this Youth Week of Prayer, we have been looking at urban redemption, youth transforming their cities. And one of the ways that the youths did this was through our various community impacts on Global Youth Day where we showed up in the cities. And I know that we have been tuning in to the week of prayer from Saturday and that we would have been, our appetite would have been blessed with some soul stirring concepts related to this show up in the city. On Saturday, Brandon looked at, does God love our city? You know, a very important thing for us to really know during this period of unrest that we experience in our various communities all over Jamaica. And then on Sunday night, Daniel looked at transforming cities following the example of Jesus. And this was a good reminder of really where we should look to for this proper example of what is to be done in our cities. On Tuesday, no, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. On Monday, Bradford, all the way from Mandeville, looked at facing loneliness in our cities. And he reminded us that being alone is not the same as being lonely. And he gave us some tips on how to battle loneliness. Leslie would have looked at facing depression in our cities. And I know that this is something that is something that affects us on a daily basis, regardless of where we are in our life and regardless of how close we are to God. Depression tends to attack at times. And she just reminded us that it doesn't last and where we can look to for aid in these times. Last night, Brandon once again looked at facing illness in our cities. And I'm sure there were a lot of lessons that were learned from this topic because illness is something that we face regardless of our standing. And tonight we're going to be looking at facing hopelessness in our city. Now, I typed in chat GPT, one of those popular AI search engine that you can chat with. I typed define hopelessness. 
And the AI replied that hopelessness is a state of mind characterized by a profound lack of optimism or expectation for positive outcome in the future. It often involves feelings of despair, resignation, and a brief and a belief, sorry, that one situation is unlikely to improve. In essence, it's the absence of hope or the feeling that there is no way out of a difficult or challenging situation. This state can be emotionally distressing and can lead to apathy, depression, and a sense of helplessness. That is what the AI said. Now, I know, I knew what depression meant, um, hopelessness meant on the surface. But after reading what the AI had to say, my eyes were opened. Now, for those who play chess, you would probably describe it as being given a checkmate. For medical persons, they would say a chronic illness. For my football fans, you would probably describe it as being an Arsenal supporter. <laughs> it's like being chased to the... And, and for... I mean, no disrespect to the Arsenal supporters. I am not as into football as the others. And so I did my research and that was the team that I was presented with. So, yes. So hopelessness is like being chased into a dead end. You are all out of moves. You have nowhere to go. You have no one to turn to. There is no plan B, C or D to fall on. It is finished. But how does this play out in our cities? Well, to get a better picture, we're going to look at some of my friends. But before we get into that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I am your daughter, your vessel, Lord. Empty me of myself and fill me with you. Let me not be seen, Lord, but let your words go forth. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, when I think of this definition of hopelessness, Goma comes to mind. And we, just in case you're wondering if it's that same Goma I'm talking about that broke Ozia's heart time and time again, yes, that is the, fir the person where I'm talking about. And, you know, at first glance, we would say that her story offer a powerful narrative of hopelessness. Just imagine Ozia, upon God's instruction, had picked Goma while she was in a hopeless state. You can say that Goma was rescued. She was ushered to O. But for some reason... Time and time again, Goma chose to return to hopelessness. Let us just take a minute to really look at this. Goma was a prostitute. She was taken from her pimp and she was brought to live in a loving and supportive home with a godly man. She was being treated better than anything she was used to. But for some reason in her art, she said she wanted to return to her lovers. She was at home with a perfectly good lover, but she chose the streets. And so she, because of this desire in her heart, she strayed from her husband and engaged in promiscuity. You would think that seeing as though this was her deep desire, she is now in a happy place. But the Bible said that she was in a worse state than she was before. Virgin, sometimes we are co-orchestrators in our own demise. 
we knowingly choose parts that lead us into dark places. Why? Because we want to try this. We want to do that. We want to go here and there. We want to be a part of the latest trends. And we bring ourselves into some very hopeless places. I just wanted to think, are you the reason for some very hopeless situations you have experienced in your life? Just think about it for a second. How did your behavior contribute to these things? What did you do that brought you to this very place? Was it a ignoring of God's voice when he said, take up the Bible instead of listening to that song? Was it stay home, but you still decided you needed to go out? What is it that you have done that brings hopelessness onto yourself? And while we think about it, we're going to take a minute and we're going to pray. And what we're praying for is for God to keep us from making decisions that lead us into hopelessness. So we're praying once again for God to keep us from making decisions that lead us into hopelessness. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. Now, there are other times that we have done nothing, but because it is one of the weapons used to keep us from, gaze, from grace, we at times feel hopeless. John is a young man who grew up in the heart of a massive city. From a young age, he experienced the challenges that come with city life. His parents worked long hours to make ends meet. But while they were making ends meet, they were absent from his life as they were kept busy with their demanding jobs. And so John felt lonely. As time went on, John entered adolescent and began to feel the brutal pressure of the city. At his school, the academic pressure was fierce and he was under a lot of pressure to get good grades. He felt very overwhelmed even though he was studying. The workload felt so much and his parents' expectations weighed down on him even more. He wondered if there was truly a future for him in that city. This thought brought on his depression. Now, this was compounded by his community not being the place of choice to live raise families, and do business. Lawlessness was its normal state, and John had to walk through the, a dark 
and partially destroyed section when returning from school. He didn't feel safe and he didn't feel connected to his neighborhood. This made him even more lonely and discouraged. All John could see now was hopelessness. As John grew older, he realized that his friends and schoolmates were also facing similar challenges. Many struggled with the stress of school, economic hardships, and the lack of, a, of clear plans in the city. They questioned whether they would even break free from the cycle of stress and experience a brighter side to them. Friends, the lack of hope in our cities affect people all around the world. It essentially feels like there are no opportunities or a chance of things to get better. And it can be related to several causes. It can be economic inequality and poverty. It can be unemployment or even underemployment. And I know this is something that really affects our youth. After going to school for so long, you are unable to get a job or you have to settle with a job that you are more than you're overqualified for. There's also the issue of housing insecurity and homelessness. We have social insecurities and crime. We have health issues affecting us, transportation challenges. And this, this, this is a pet peeve for me because it is quite the struggle to get to and from work. And then you have food insecurity, whether it be the lack of certain food items or the cost is just outrageous. These are all tools being used by these are all being to, these are all tools being used to keep people homeless, to keep hopeless, to keep us hopeless. There is a fight. A great fight going on, Bridging. And it's a fight for our minds. This fight is between God and Satan. And Satan forms these weapons that blind or darken our minds. He does this to keep us hopeless, to keep us thinking there is no way out. They keep us wondering, does Jesus care? They cause us to act as if all is lost. This is not what God wants for us. This is something that we must pray about. And so, and so we're going to pause now. And we're going to pray and ask God to dismantle the weapons formed to keep us hopeless and far from him.
ايمان our question can we overcome this lack of hope that is in our cities as servants of god how do we combat hopelessness for ourselves and for the Johns and the Gomas in our cities? Where can we find hope? You know, the word hope appears over 130 times in the Bible. And it is a reoccurring theme, highlighting its significance in faith and our relationship with God. Right, so now we're going to look at those verses that I posted before, and I'm going to ask the person that found Romans 15 verse 13 to just open your mic and go ahead and read it. So that's Romans 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that a wonderful text to reflect on? whenever you get in that state. God is there to fill you and to overpower you with hope through the Holy Spirit. You know, this is something that we can rest assured that will happen whenever we feel hopeless. We're going to look at the next one, Hebrews 11, verse 1. It is the opposite. Oh, Hebrews 11. 11. 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, I thought everybody would have opened their mic to read this one because this is one that we know from memory. You know, this this is one that we readily rock on when we're looking for something and we're not sure where it will come from. When we're looking for that school fee, we're not sure where it will come from. We're looking for the meal to come. And we're not sure. This is the one that we usually quote to combat Satan when he comes with his negativity. Right? And and this is a very good one to remember in times of hopelessness. All right, we're going to look at the next one, Psalms 42, verse 11. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. When I read this one, I what I remembered was a little thing that I tell myself to keep reminding me that even in the bad times, God is still there and he's good. And that is in all things give thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, this one is saying that you're you're oh you feel out and down, but 
there is much to give thanks for. There is much to hope for. So, you know, don't don't stay in your hopeless state because that's not what God wants for you. He wants you to lift your head, stand upright, and show that his goodness is indeed running after you. All right, so we are going to do the next one, which is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. So here we read, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has already established plans for your life. And they, they are nothing to do with hopelessness, right? And brethren, these are practical verses that remind you that hopelessness is not what God had in the plan for you. And so I hope you wrote down these, these verses, you know, so that whenever it comes to you, write it down, paste it up and say, and right above it verses to combat hopelessness right these verses can help you through the tough times god has good plans for us and he has never written anything negative in his plans towards our life and so these verses will help us to remember this and we're going to look at the final one which is first peter one verses verse three Okay, in the interest of time, I go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen, amen. And if this verse, brothers and sisters, doesn't give you hope. I don't, I don't know what will. Right? If this verse that, that give you hope of a new life through Jesus Christ, right? That give you that living hope. If it doesn't inspire you to get out of your hopelessness, God may need to come and touch you and run that hopelessness from you. These verses help us to better understand hope. They're like anchors that help us stay steadfast in the midst of the storm. Just as a ship needs an anchor to avoid drifting, we need the, th we need the following three truths to maintain our hope. And truth one is that the Bible is the book of hope. We have the Bible on our phones. We have physical copies. We can take up our laptops and access the Bible. This is the book of hope. And you know, Romans 15 verse 4 says, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and encouragement they provide we might have hope the bible is a treasure trove of hope the bible is filled with stories of people who face challenges and obstacles but also experienced hope and divine redemption i can list a lot of these stories that we grew up on that give us these these hope hopelessness to hope stories you have the story of samson you have the story of goma 
you have the story of Daniel in the lion's den. You have the three Hebrew boys, boys, and I could go on and on. Joseph, Moses, there are so many persons who in the midst of hopelessness found hope through divine love and redemption. God speaks to us through the Bible. He offers us these promises and words of encouragement that fill us with hope in the midst of difficult times. And what I want you to do is just type in the chat some of the promises that you hold on to when you're going through your difficult times. You can just type that in the chat. To find hope, guidance, and comfort in God's word, you must be consistent. No, I'm talking to myself in this very moment. Yannick, you cannot just read it sometimes. You can't just read it when you have a little spare time and then other times you don't read it. You must prayerfully read and study the word every day. It must become a daily habit. And additionally, you must share these stories of hope from the Bible with others to inspire and to encourage those going through tough times. So we're not just going to read and find hope for ourselves. We're sharing the hope with others. All right, so let me see if I can look at All right, somebody said that one of their promises, God said you will never leave or forsake us. And that is that is a very good one. I also see, well, two persons said the same promise, actually. So, you know, these are one of the promises that we cling to. But my, my promise that I cling to whenever times get difficult and I just wonder, why what's the point of it all is where jesus said that he has gone to prepare a place for me you know we have rooms in our houses but jesus said that in his father's house there are many mansions so i know that I can rest assured that if on earth I cannot find a place to abode, there is a mansion waiting on me. And so that gives me hope. Now, truth two. Jesus is the hope of glory. Colossians 1 verse 27 tells us that God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus is the ultimate source of hope, and he represents divine glory. He is life, death, and resurrection offer. Sorry, his life, death, and resurrection offer us hope of reconciliation with God and the promise of eternal life. Faith in Jesus transforms our lives and fills us with the hope of attaining eternal glory with him. To maintain hope, it's crucial to develop a personal relationship with Jesus. And this can be done through prayer, and reflection, experiencing is hope and transformation in our lives. So it's it's not just about reading and hearing about these persons who experience their hope. We have to build that connection with Christ so that we ourselves can experience this hope and can know first and that he is really true hope. 
and that he is the hope of glory. And now our third truth, the second coming of Christ is our blessed hope. Titus 2 verse 13 says, While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. The promise that Jesus will return is a source of hope for believers. If it's a source of hope for you, type amen in the chat. You know, knowing that Jesus will be coming back to establish his kingdom fills us with this great anticipation and it motivates us to live in holiness and preparedness. This hope gives us the strength to face our current hopelessness because we know with certainty there is a glorious future waiting on us. In challenging times, always remember the promise of the second coming of Christ to find comfort and strength. Brothers and sisters, the Bible offers us an infinite source of hope. Jesus himself is the embodiment of the hope of glory. And the second coming of Christ is our blessed hope. By embracing these, these truths and applying them in our daily lives, we can experience hope that transcends our circumstances and guides us towards an eternal future with God. Now, we're going to go into our final prayer session with this. And what we're going to pray about is that when things start to seem hopeless, we will remember these three truths and that they will guide us through the dark times that come upon us. Amen. You know, brothers and sisters, I wish I could have spoken to Goma across the ages. But since I cannot, I will speak to you who seem just as hopeless at times. I wouldn't call you hopeless. Lost, maybe. Entangled, for sure. The world you lived in, this world that we're living in offers freedoms that entangle you and lead you away from that love that is always waiting on you. But listen closely, brothers and sisters. Even in the depths of your despair, 
God sees a spark. He sees a woman, a man, a boy, a girl who is worthy of love and is capable of returning to the light. And just as he used Ozia for Goma, he uses others to show you a path back and you to show others the same. His love wasn't based on your actions, but on your potential, on who you truly are. Even when you strayed, his love holds steady. It is a constant beacon in the storm. Your story isn't one of redeemable mistakes. It's a testament to the enduring power of love and forgiveness. It's a promise that no matter how far we wander, there's always a way back to hope. Brothers and sisters, our situations may look hopeless, but that's only because we view them through our own eyes. We look for another door to open when one shuts, but God's from God from his point of view sees places to create new doors. So while we're looking for doors to open, God is positioning us to create a new one. Now, we were looking at John earlier, and I don't want you to think that his situation ended that hopeless. One day, he had the opportunity to attend an evangelistic conference in his city. The preacher talked about the importance of being strong and seeking opportunities for building a support network and developing a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. The speakers were deeply impacted, John, who began to seek ways to improve his situation. Although the city had its challenges still, John began to see a glimmer of hope in his future. He realized that with effort and the right support, he could overcome obstacles and pave the way for a better life. John's story reminds us that even in the toughest, toughest cities, Hope and personal growth are possible. These are possible when we seek support, opportunities, and open our hearts to Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Brothers and sisters, hopelessness is not something that will disappear unless we focus on solely on Christ. But we have the hope that whenever it sneaks upon us, we have Jesus to turn to. And, you know, I want my young people to be looking out for these persons in our city who may, you can know from their speech that they are at the end of their rope. Persons who act out. Persons who seem to care about nothing. Sometimes these persons just don't see a future. But we are reading these promises and we have this great hope in Christ Jesus. And so my brothers and sisters, my young people, I want us to go out and bring this hope for a better life, a better home to these cities with these hopeless persons. 
And I'm going to pray now that we will take up this work. Though it is great, it is possible through Christ Jesus that we will bring hope to our cities. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your words have gone forth, Lord. We know that hope is scattered all over your words. It is scattered in the promises that you have given us, Lord. It is scattered in your actions when you died on the cross for our sins. Lord, we know that hopelessness is in the devil's plan, Lord, not yours. And so, Lord, we ask that whenever this darkness, this hopelessness comes upon us, Lord, that we will remember you, that we will plug into you, Lord. We will connect to our glorious hope, Lord. And Lord, we won't just look out for ourselves, Lord. There are many mansions in heaven, Lord. We don't need to compete for them. So Lord, help us to look out for our brothers and sisters who are feeling hopeless, Lord. Help us to find ways to point them to you, Lord. Help us to find ways to bring you to their hopeless situations. Lord, be with us, be with the youth. They're being attacked rampantly, Lord, whether it is through persons kidnapping them, Lord, by the social media occupying their time, Lord, through depressing thoughts, Lord. They are losing hope and they are losing faith. So, Lord, I ask that you will inject daily doses of hope into their lives. Allow them to connect to you, Lord, and to remove these sources of hopelessness that keeps them blinded. Continue to strengthen your church and your workers, Lord as we prepare for your return, our blessed hope. In your son's name, I pray and say thanks. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as the scripture reading said, we will experience tribulations, but we must remember that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope does not, will not make us ashamed, but it will bring us closer to that day when Christ will return. It will shed God's love in our hearts. And so let us continue to hope through our trials and tribulations and take back souls from the enemy's camp. Mm Okay, our closing hymn for tonight is hymn number 522, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to melt its face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. 
On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant and blood, so pours me in the woman's blood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I bend in him be proud, that in his righteousness alone, all next to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock and stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Such a timely message, such timely songs. Um, amen. And then during the sermon, I was also I was also speaking to myself. So, so Michael, you also need to be consistent, All right. Um, thank you very much for that message, Sister Gordon. All right, and I, I'm tempted to say that. Um, I wouldn't call Arsenal fans hopeless, really. I would say they're very hopeful. And and maybe some of us need to have that Arsenal faith, whereas we are expecting certain things to happen and expecting and longing for certain things to happen and we desire certain things. And, and when it does not come to fruition, we, we don't waver, right? We don't change, right? I've never seen an Arsenal fan change from Arsenal. And I, and I was hope that us as children of God never lose faith in God, uh, while we still haven't seen the way all right so thank you again um thank you to everyone who has joined us to join us tonight and um, thank you for those who participated in our program from the song service to the specials to the scripture reading to the prayer all right join us again tomorrow evening yes when we have another dynamic sermon by sister natalie mckenzie all right and again we'll close up this week saturday and sunday um, with other dynamic speakers and on other dynamic sermons. So as we go this evening, all right, as we are facing hopelessness in our cities, uh, we should cling to God even more, build and root our foundations in God and have more hope and faith in him in everything we do. Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we thank you for being with our program this evening. Mighty God, I ask that you wipe away all anxiety, all hope, feelings of hopelessness from us. Help us to stay rooted and anchored in you. That while we may not see the way as yet, why, while we have that deep longing, our deep expectations for things we've hoped for, things we've prayed for, and we still haven't seen it. Uh, we acknowledge that things are done according to your will and your timing. However, mighty God, I ask that you calm our spirits and ease our minds uh, that we stay true to the promise that you have given to us thank you for all you're about to do in our lives bless us and protect us in jesus name i pray amen good night amen michael amen amen and good night